If you're in the market for an FJ Cruiser, now is the time to buy. Let's get started. This one's in the shop for just a few items. This is a 2012 Toyota FJ Cruiser 4x4, and it only has 69,000 miles. It's in very good condition. Just did some quick services and some brake work we'll show you here in a little bit. But while it's here, we want to do a video on the values of this thing, how during COVID, post-COVID, we've seen a roller coaster of values on multiple different makes and models of cars, but these are no exception. And actually, we used to have one, didn't we, Mrs. Wizard? I almost thought this was ours when we first came in today. It does look like the one we had. And Mrs. Wizard can show you guys here in a little bit why we got rid of it and some of the other issues we had with it, which really weren't mechanical issues. It was more usability issues. But before we dive in, let's take a look around this thing, how nice this one is. Here's the front of this nice FJ Cruiser. It's been unmodified, unmolested. It is in its original form and it has really nice wheels. As we go along the side, it has this really nice ride height that I wish mine would have had where it doesn't sit so high in the air. It's still a four x four, but it sits a lot lower. We'll talk about that more in a little bit. No scratches, no dents. Again, stock, it's not been lifted with crazy tires or crazy suspension. It's a little dirty from having it rained on, but it is in very, very nice condition. I love the black color with the white top. It really sets it off real nice. Let's jump under the hood. This one stays up, Mrs. Wizard. Oh, it doesn't need Viagra. That's nice. Actually, speaking of Viagra, we do sell some little tools that go on and clamp on these or in our Amazon affiliates. We frequently use them to hold up hood props. You'd be surprised to people, you present to them, hey, these are 20 bucks a piece. We could fix these so your hood could stay up. And they say, I'm not interested. I don't want to do that. So it's kind of a bummer, but it is what it is. Here's the engine bay. It's a little dusty, but it's in good shape. We'll just kind of lift that up in the air. You can see it has nice long intake runners for torque. No leaks around the top of the engine or around the front of the engine. It's as to be expected from a Toyota product. It's in very good shape under here. There's two different versions of this engine. You can get 2007 to about 2009 and they got about 240 horsepower. They're the lower horsepower version of this engine. Being this is 2012, which from about 2010 to 2014, when they stopped making them, they have 260 horsepower. And a few other revisions and things that make it nicer, as Mrs. Wizard will show you in the interior with the rearview mirror. The 2010 and newer are the higher value cars because they have more power and a few more features. But nothing major going on under the hood. Everything looks very good. Let's go ahead and jump into the interior. Okay, ladies, gents, he's right. 69,717 miles on this guy. And look at those lights. Yeah, they actually work. They just don't hardly ever get to be used because it's a Toyota product. But nice gauge cluster, simple to use, very easy to, you know, read. One thing I always thought was interesting is when we had ours is here's this interesting little hole right there. And they've got, oh, they've got some, you know, 3D glasses in there, you know, important things. But I always thought that was interesting. And people in the comments when we did our video said maybe that was before when it is a right-hand drive that it accommodates for different things. I don't know. Got a fun center section here. Lots of things. Yes, it's 70 degrees in the shop today. It is nice weather in Kansas. But again, airbag over there. So you can kind of see that that shape over there for the airbag and this little hidey hole are about the same size and shape. So that's probably what it was uh, just to make it more universal for whichever market they were designing for. Big bar section there and way underneath there is your glove box. We'll move to our center section. We have some piano black going around all of our controls there. And this is where some of the problems we had with ours is, let me turn off our light. And without the light over there, if this is a dark day, this becomes black on black on black, and it gets very, very hard to see. So that was kind of frustrating when we were trying to find things, is just, there's a lot of black. We move down, you'll see that we have different controls, and it looks like there's options that could have been on this car that just did not come with this model. Simple gear selector, cup holder, you know, how good, lint roller, of course, what everyone needs, and a little bit of hand sanitizer, perfect. So you move to our seats. They do have 
a nice little armrest here and it locks. Pushing down, it locks. So if you want to reset it, you have to, like if you have to lift it up to put your seatbelt on, you can't put it back down. You have to put it all the way up, all the way back down. So minor annoyance, but if you don't use the armrest, it's not a problem. But seats are looking great in here. Nice gray color with a nice kind of a texture color in the center. Our door cards are plastic plastic, a little more plastic with a little bit of silver plastic. But it all is looking really good and it is very utilitarian like this car is. The back seat in this is absolutely immaculate. Look at that. Again, it's, I know it's black on black in here. This is uh, one of the issues. It, thank goodness we have a light for the camera. But it's in really, really, really good shape. Has a 40-60 split and then it does have a small cargo area. You can get the camera back there as well. Headliner, good shape, nothing but a sea of gray, sea of gray, sea of gray. One thing that is very nice is this is a very large window. And because it is so large and we are seated so far away from the front that there's no way that visor in the front is going to cover. So they have added a secondary visor here to make up for the gap that it has created. So nice little addition there. Wizard promise you the rear view mirror picture. And so let me push the brake, put it into reverse, and there is the tiniest of tiny. If it'll focus on it, there it is, ladies and gents. There's our very, very, very tiny little backup camera. Oh, and there's the wizard. Hi, wizard. Yeah, we won't run you over today. So we're back to the steering wheel. And this is where one of the areas is that the wizard and I didn't exactly appreciate the car. And that's right here, right next to it. Every time you were to jump in because his was higher, you would bonk your knees on this. And it always constantly hit your knees. And it was just kind of got to be kind of tedious. You're like, oh, I forgot. And it was just hard to get in and out. It's kind of like a car I can just climb in and out and don't have to worry about, am I gonna hit my, you know, knee and make it go jumping. But got simple controls on that steering wheel. It's looking good, no blistering, nothing like that, but in great condition. So enough of this interior talk. I Here we're gonna look at the underneath in a very interesting way on this one. Wizard, what are you doing with that? Well, I'm gonna have you lay on this. I'm gonna push you around and get between your legs and you can show everyone what's going on underneath this the car. This is a family channel, sir. I don't know if we can do this on camera. Well, they won't see any anything else. They'll just see what's underneath the car. I guess. Mental pictures for you all. All right, here you go. Guys, I don't know why he talked me into doing this. I really don't. I'm a little scared. You ready, you ready for a push, Mrs. Wizard? Yeah, I guess so. Here we go. Oh, it's a little tight under here, guys. I'll tell you that. Here you go. What do you see under there? So I don't really see anything, dear. Everything looks nice and dry? Yeah, yeah, I don't see anything. I mean, looking at the oil pan, it's looking great. What about the transmission or the transfer case area? Transmission is okay. I need you to slide me over back to the back of the car a little, if you can, without rubbing my face across the end of this car. Okay, there we are. Oh, well, this one says 196 on it. I'm not sure why the transmission says 196 on it, but it does. But looking good. Got a lot more space back here. Let me tell you, it's not so low to the ground. But looks good. Transfer case is good. Yeah, yeah. All right, enough of that silliness. Everything looked pretty dry under there, though? Yeah, it looked okay. It was a, a little tight, and I think my ear got rubbed off at one point. Okay, we probably don't need to go any further. Please. It's actually already been checked out by Daniel's son, and everything looked like brand new, basically, underneath. The front brakes were getting very thin. We did put new rotors and pads. We'll take a look at that. See, nice brand new rotors, brand new pads. We've got that taken care of. We also changed out the cabin filter. Let me show you. It was looking pretty bad. You can see lots of dirt and bugs and trash in there. We definitely didn't want to send it out of here being all nasty like that. Nobody wants to breathe or smell that. But one of the things the customer requested is that someone had installed a trailer brake system for electric brakes in the rear, which is really crazy because this vehicle is not even rated for enough towing capacity to have to need trailer brakes. If you're going to tow something that needs brakes, 10, 12,000 pounds, this is not the vehicle for that. Also, the customer said when they purchased this, they noticed they kept hitting their knee on the trailer brake controller. So let me show you where it was at. It was roughly in this area right here. And you can see as you would sit down, you would hit your knee on that and it got very annoying. So as requested, it's been removed and we'll give it to the customer. If they want to throw it away, they can or whatever, but no longer has that anymore. So that's pretty much the only reasons it was here. We got it caught up on services, got an oil change done, brakes. 
the controller removed, cabin filter, and a few other small things, tire rotation, nothing serious. Now let's talk about values. These things have always been popular, they've always been in high demand, and they still kind of are, but values have been all over the place. Pre-COVID, they were kind of expensive because they're, they're in demand, you know, they would be 12, 15, 20, 25 thousand dollar range, maybe 30, and we've seen these all over the place. They're, there really are a lot of them. I wish they still made them. And I think maybe there's talk they're going to remake them or bring them back, but because they stopped making them in 2014, that did increase the value. And right after COVID, it was really crazy. We saw a lot of things happen with house prices, car prices. Really, the value of everything went sky high. There was a time when a 2014 with low miles like this, 60, 70,000 miles, would go for fifty or even sixty thousand dollars. I don't even know if they cost that much when they were brand new. Way, way high. And even if you got an older model, 07 or so, with a lot of miles, it was still going to be nineteen thousand, twenty thousand. That has changed. A lot of things are starting to cool off. The housing market is a little bit. The interest rates. Hopefully, they go down even more. But we're starting to see car prices go down as well. One of the things I've been noticing that has really dropped is the FJ Cruiser value. Let me show you some pictures I have of some for sale right now. Here we have a 2014 that's got low miles. You can see it was at 41.5 and they've marked it down all the way to 35 because it's not selling. Prices are dropping. No longer are they 55 or 65 thousand dollars. Now they're $35,000, almost half price. Let me show you another one. Here's a 2014 also with some low miles. 28,998, that's getting even better. Totally getting into an affordable range. There's one more I'll show you. This is an older model with high miles, 2007, for just under 11 grand. That's cheap. I've actually seen some of these with really high miles, an 07 or 08 model, go for $99.99. So if you're in the market for an FJ Cruiser, don't wait any longer. If you've got the cash or you've got the financing, go find you a nice one and go for it because these are still going to be very collectible. I don't think the prices are going to drop that much more. You can have a really nice one now for no longer sixty grand. You can get one for thirty or thirty-five. If you paid 50 or 60 grand for one here just recently, a year or two ago, sadly, you just lost half the value of your vehicle. But that's happened to a lot of people with houses and cars where they paid top dollar really high for, for vehicles or, or houses and now they're upside down. It's this kind of sad situation we're in. I hate to see that. But it's just the roller coaster we're in right now. Things are up and down and up and down and it's really uncontrollable. There's nothing we can do to change it. It's possible they could go back up in value again, especially as they get older, some of them wear out, there's less numbers of them. Like I mentioned, they stopped making them in 2014. It could be that the value goes back up again, and that's definitely proof that you need to buy one now if you're in the market. If I was looking to buy another one, I wouldn't wait any longer. I would be scanning right now and searching. Also, make sure you get a pre-purchase inspection, not a post-purchase inspection. I've been seeing that happening a lot lately. Hey, car wizard, I just bought this car. I'd like to get it checked out. Probably should have got it checked out before you bought the car because you could really get burned. You could get scammed. So again, if you can swing it, now's the time to buy one of these. Are these good cars? Of course, they're a Toyota. As this one proves, it, obviously it only has 70,000 miles roughly on it, but there is no leaks, nowhere, and it drives like a brand new vehicle. Some of these can have 150, 200,000 miles on them. Still, no leaks, and it drives like a new vehicle. So yes, they are a very good vehicle. So if you're curious what kind of tools we use to work on this FJ Cruiser, we have really all the tools we use in the shop is listed on our Amazon affiliates link in the description below. If you purchase anything, we get a small cut and we really appreciate it. 
Also check out Mrs. Wizard's Way. She's got some new videos she just filmed. It's going to be coming out soon. You definitely want to check those out. Also click the subscribe button over there while you're there. And make sure to hit the subscribe button here as well because there's a full schedule all through next month, which means a full month of videos for you guys. Thanks for watching.